Hey there, Nick Genethakis here. In this video, we're going to be using grep and a regular expression to help protect ourselves from inserting accidental characters into a file when using Vim. So if you're brand new to Vim, or maybe you've been using Vim for a while, you'll know how easy it is to accidentally insert characters like colon W just flat out in the middle of your file, thinking that you were going to write the file, but you were in insert mode, so you just accidentally added that to the file. Now, if you're working with some type of programming language runtime or compiler, you know, that's totally going to call you out on that mistake, and it's going to be very easy to get notified and fix that, right? Because your program won't compile if there's just like a colon W sitting in the middle of like an if statement. But if you're writing something like documentation or you have a blog like me here and you just have you know, a whole bunch of different uh, markdown files in here, right? Font size is a little big, but there's actually, uh, you know, quite a lot of, of a blog post here, right? 304 of them. Uh, there's like hundreds and hundreds, hundreds of thousands of words in these files. And uh, it's kind of interesting because recently someone emailed me and they were like, by the way, Nick, did you know that you just have a colon W sitting here in the middle of your blog post? And then I was like, oh, no, I didn't know that. Interesting, thanks for calling that out. And then I go check that out, and there it was, just sitting there in plain text, uh, ready to go. Uh, but, you know, I kind of figured, like, wouldn't it be kind of neat if I had a little script or, you know, some command that I can run to help protect me against that from happening in the future? And I started thinking about, like, other possible scenarios where you may insert uh, incorrect things into a file when using Vim. And, uh, and this will be easier to demonstrate just like trying things out here. So if I go to Vim and I just open up like a new file here and uh, we just start typing like this is a new text file. Um, if you're working with Vim here, right? And what I was talking about before is like if you wanted to save the file, you can easily end up in a situation where you just have that sitting in your file. But when you're in Vim here, right? I'm in normal mode, just moving around on this line. If I hit uh, shift I here, that's going to bring me to the very start of the line and it's gonna automatically put me into insert mode. And then I can just begin typing like, cool, this is something like new, right? Um, at the beginning of the line. This is something I do all the time. And it's kind of interesting when you're writing a blog post, like if you've never really written much before, it's very much like coding where you might write, it, write a sentence or two, and then you look at that and you're just like, no, mm, that's no good. So you need to refactor it. So, you know, you could be in the middle of a sentence and then you're like, yeah, I'll just go to like the beginning here and just add something there. And what happens is when you hit shift I and like a word starts with an I, like you're doing uh, like I'm or I or something like that, it's actually not impossible to end up in a situation where you have two capitalized next to each other. And when I went and I looked through all of my blog posts, I actually did find a case of this. So it is worth totally uh, checking for that. And another one, uh, basically the opposite of shift I is in Vim, if you do shift A, that brings you to the very end of the line. And then you're also in insert mode and you can just start typing whatever you want. So what happens uh, is once in a while, like if, you, if you're in the you know, mix of things, like really typing and you're not just like narrating a video in real time as you're typing, you could totally end up just in a situation where you do this, where you hit shift A really fast and like you start typing because like the word you want to type has uh, like an A or something or possibly you didn't mean to do capital A. Like you just end up in this situation where you just have a, an A at the end of the line by accident and you didn't expect it to be there. And I also, I also found one case of that in my, um, well, my blog post as well. So I kind of put all of that together. And, and by the way, if there are other accidental things that I'm just not aware of that you typically could find in a file by accident when using Vim, uh, please let us know in the comments below. That's basically all the use cases we're going to test for in this one grep commands, but it would be very easy to look for other stuff as well. I just can't think of anything else beyond those three things. So. In grep here, uh, we'll just do uh, extended regular expressions because we are going to be using uh, or basically, and I've covered this before, like, you know, if you do something like this, it's going to grep for A or B or C. So we're going to be looking for a couple of different patterns. Uh, the first pattern is going to be very easy, right? The colon W, and that's going to pick up things like colon WQ too, like if you're trying to do a, a, a right quit. But we also want to do things like at the beginning of the line, if we have two A's. Done. That's all we need to check for. And the next one is going to be an A and then the end of the line. And, and that's all we need, we need to do as well. But, uh, you know, we're also going to do recursive and we're, all, we're, we're, we're only going to return the matches that are found. And then we're going to check in the current directory because this happens to be uh, my post directory, right, where all those markdown files are. And if I run through here, uh, the font size is a little big. Apologies in there. But uh, you can see how inside of this post directory, 
we found uh, two eyes there. Now, this is kind of interesting because there are going to be false positives, right? Uh, in this case, this is a blog post where I kind of related to like playing video games can teach you real life skills. And I know that double eye there is uh, Diablo 2, like written like this. So that's totally normal. And I checked it out and I was cool with that. And uh, something like this one, like would Socrates use Docker today? So, you know, if I go in here and edit this file here with Vim and we take a look here, um, can you actually do a search like this with a regular expression? I think you can. Yeah, so like this one in this case, it's like, and again, the font size is a little bit weird, but you know, that's the end of that line. Like this actually makes sense. Like, you know, testing and Q&A, like questions and answers. So I totally wanted that one there. You know, that wasn't like a false positive. But, um, and it's kind of interesting too, because like this Docker tip here, like this W uh, colon W is in there. And that was actually on purpose. And I'm not going to go through all of these, but you know, I did go through all of these and these were all on purpose. So um, this is not something you can really throw into like CI, like continuous integration server, and then kind of just halt everything if you find one case of it, because, you know, in normal writing, you probably will have a few cases of this, but this will get you going. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty fairly easy to run. Um, maybe down the line, what I could do here, and you might want to do this uh, as well, is like drop this into an alias or something like that, where you can just type out the alias and then pass in the directory where you want to run it against. But I kind of figured before I would uh, create an alias for that and put it up into my dot files, you know, I figured I'd put this video out first because maybe I am missing a couple of different patterns that uh, we can search for. But uh, these are the ones for now. And, uh, you know, in this case, I did find, you know, actually four cases. Like there were uh, one case of colon W and then two double I's and one A in all of my blog posts. So you may want to check it out if you do a lot of writing. You know, maybe it's happened to you as well. On that note, uh, I hope you liked the video. Please give it a thumbs up because it really helps in the end. Also, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer all of them. With that said, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.